Connie greeted me as I entered and poured three fingers of my favorite amber liquid in front of me. Same as last Saturday stud. Dave told me that if I screwed you, I'd have to shelter you, Connie, and I wouldn't be able to provide you with the lifestyle you're used to, I replied with a smile. Bullshit, you can provide me with a much better standard of living than that Dave guy over there, he makes me work with him at the bar every damn night. Watch it, it's either work in a bar or sell your body. We need to make a living, Dave shouted in feigned anger. Dave and Connie had been running the Northern Bar at the Tel No One Hotel for the past 10 years. Over the years, I've come here with and without my wife, Christy, and they and I have become good friends. Saturday nights, I like to come here to get away from it all, hopefully in a certain type of company. The Northern is where I find companions and where Connie has offered me a wager, the bet, which I never dared make that if I couldn't find a companion by closing time, Connie would be my guest in the hotel room I always reserved for Saturday nights. The Northern wasn't the best bar in town, but it was in the hotel and attracted people who wanted a racy night away from their spouses or just a place to add spice to their sex life. I was looking for neither. I was a tool that women used for that purpose. You see, I'm a tall, dark-haired, and handsome guy with a big dick. I'm the lone perch in this pond full of blue gills, believe me, there are quite a few women who come here on Friday Saturday nights looking for what I can give them. I try not to be a total douchebag when it comes to my dating marriage, just one time, no long affairs. I always return them to their hubby after the ladies have scratched an itch and started acting weird with me. I found that communication was the biggest marriage problem these women faced so I encourage them to have meaningful conversations with their husbands more often. I also looked out for married guys promoting the many benefits of blowjobs. I wasn't always that kind of guy. I was married for eight years to the love of my life, but a couple years ago, my wife Christy was taken from us by a car accident, and I was left with two children. At first, no one could explain why she was on the west side at that time of day, but then I unfortunately found out. Tom Spaggs, that was the name of the lover she had for about the last month of her life. I reported him to his wife Mary as soon as I found out about them, and screwed her twice in retaliation as she wanted, with the second time she sent him pictures before kicking him out. Finding out that the woman I loved had betrayed me made me want revenge for some reason. My depressed brain decided that having women to go out of their way on those Saturday nights was that revenge, yes. I dumped them after the first time without flaunting them or ruining their reputations but if they pursued me further, I'd start a rumor about their cheating and it could reach their husbands, that was one part of the revenge. The second was that if they kept coming back for more, as my late wife did, I used them as whores. A few months ago I met Tracy. She was a beautiful woman flirted with me before she asked me if I wanted to take her to bed, yes. That's exactly how she phrased it. I did, of course, but after noticing her wedding ring, I asked about her husband. He wouldn't mind, she said so, and she and I had a really hot night. It was one of the best sexual experiences of my life. She was unexpected, talented, and didn't hide anything from me. Back to this Saturday, Tracy walked into the northern and immediately sat down next to me at the bar. Hi, Rick, she said cheerfully, how are you doing, Tracy? I'm a polite person. I've missed you, she whispered in my ear. Tracy, you know how I feel about married women have you discussed anything with your husband since we met? I was giving her a way out by mentioning my husband. He never had what you have, Rick, she whispered again with a note of excitement in her voice. It was exactly the way I'd pictured my wife, which made my blood boil when I heard Tracy's words, had Christy been as disrespectful to me in her conversations with Tom? I would never know. I grabbed Tracy by the shoulders and turned her around so that we're face to face. Tracy, if you want us back together, you're going to have to obey me from now on. Do you understand what I'm saying? I gave her a stern look so she knew I meant it and she could still refuse. It's not a problem. Sir, she replied with a lustful smirk. I leaned closer to her and said quietly, go to the bathroom, take off your panties, and bring them to me. 
Tracy got up from her chair slipped her hand under her skirt and pulled down her panties, the guy behind her got a full view of her ass and pussy. He looked at me. Not believing his luck. And I just winked at him, Tracy sat up again and held them out to me and smiled. I'll do anything you say, Rick. I'll be a horror for you. I guess I need to step up my dominance game with this submissive slot, here's my room key. Go up to your room and take off your clothes, slut. I wanna finish my drink. Tracy immediately left the bar and entered the elevator. I sipped from my glass, and Connie walked over to me, was that Tracy? Uh huh. She came back for more. Connie knew what would happen if I went upstairs, she'd seen the result of what had happened to several married women who'd come back to me, and she wanted to try to save Tracy from such a fate. Connie, she's a big girl. If you don't let her come to me, she'll just go to someone else to get what she wants. I understand, Rick. I really do, but you need to end this revenge tour of yours even if the women deserve it, it's going to eat you up in the end. I know, Connie, but it's not going to happen tonight, I told her, finishing my drink and heading for the elevator. I opened the door to the room and saw Tracy lying in bed under the covers. I wasn't sure you were coming, Rick, I finished my drink before getting up to feed my slut cock. This is what you want, isn't it? Come over here and undress me. Yes, sir. Tracy grinded. For the next two hours, I used her body for my pleasure. What could make a woman do that? What need was being satisfied in her when she did that? I didn't know Tracy well enough to ask her to explain her feelings or needs to me, but I really wanted to know if Christy was the same way. The only one who had an answer was Tom. I knew where his apartment was, so the next day, I took my mom and kids to a park near there. I told mom I had to meet someone and ask her to watch Cindy and Jimmy for a while. She was more than happy to do so, but her radar was on, and she threw me a suspicious look. Maybe I'll explain it to her later. Tom was reluctant to open the door at first, but I explained that I wasn't going to hurt him, and he finally let me in. There wasn't much second-hand furniture in the apartment and nothing hanging on the walls. It looked like Mary had gotten her revenge, not only with me, but also in the divorce. Tom, I need to know about your relationship with Christy. Why did you two get together? Rick, I'm nervous about telling you. I don't want you to freak out like you did after the funeral. Tom, we both know I wouldn't pee on you even if you were on fire, but things have not been going well for me since Christy died. I need some peace of mind, and you're the only one who can give it to me. I know it's going to hurt me to hear what you're going to say, and I'll probably get angry, but I'm not going to lash out at you. Why the hell should I tell you anything? You ruined my marriage. You slept with my wife twice, Tom replied angrily. At least you had a chance to try to save the marriage you ruined. You could have talked to Mary. Well, I didn't even realize there was anything wrong with my marriage while Christy was alive. I was pretty emotional and stopped myself from sounding too nervous. What exactly do you want to know, Rick? We had sex. Neither of us were in love. We only went out twice. I don't know about Christy, but I had a feeling we were going to end it. She was enthusiastic the first time. But the last time we were together, she didn't really like it. Did she ever tell you why? Was she planning on leaving me? I said it more sharply than I meant to. She loved you, Rick. She never planned on leaving you. She never really told me why she decided to cheat on you, but I got the impression that she thought you cheated on her. Was she, uh, was she, uh, a whore to you? Was she? No. It wasn't like that. We just had regular sex, no kinky stuff, and we never said anything bad about our spouses. Honestly, Rick, Thinking back on some of the things she said while we were having sex, I think she was using me as revenge. I just figured she was into it at the time, but I remember her telling me several times to use his wife. She wouldn't have said that if she needed sex herself. Tears streamed down my face after I heard Tom quote Christie's words, I never cheated on her. Why would she think that? Did you tell her I was cheating on her? I screamed. No. I swear Rick. I worked with Christy for two years. 
she was in love with you, and I never hit on her, I was in love with Mary. I don't know where she got the idea that you cheated on her, no one gained anything by telling her that. I was looking for a closure. And instead, I got a mystery, who told Christy I cheated on her if I didn't? Tom, thank you for telling me about your relationship with Christy. It really helped me understand a little bit, I'm really sorry about Christy Rick. She really loved you no matter what happened between us. I hope you can find some peace once you find what you're looking for. I went back to the park and played with the kids for another hour before taking them. Mom sensed something had happened while I was gone. We loaded the kids into the car and on the way home, she asked if I was okay, I said we would talk at home. The kids wanted to go swimming as soon as we got in. So mom and I put on their bathing gear and sat by the pool to chat. Where did you go this afternoon, Rick? I went to see Tom Spags, I needed to ask him some questions. Oh, Rick. You didn't do anything stupid, did you? You can't let yourself get arrested. Kids need their daddy. I just asked him about him and Christy, he thinks Christy thought I cheated on her and had sex with him in revenge. Do you trust him, Rick? Who would lie to Christy about something like that? I don't know, Mom. To me, if Christy was lied to and she decided to get revenge, somehow it's better than thinking I wasn't enough for her. Tom told me he didn't say that to seduce her. I believe him. Why would he lie to me now if it didn't matter? If not him, then who? Honestly, I have no idea at all. For the next week, I didn't sleep well. My mom and I went through every name we could think of that had shown interest in Christy over the years. No one came to mind who would try to ruin our marriage. When Saturday came, I wasn't even sure I wanted to go out. Mom showed up at 9 o'clock as she did every Saturday night and practically shoved me out the door. You need to go have a couple drinks and meet women or whatever it is you do to settle down every week, son. You look exhausted, and sitting here all night isn't gonna help. All right, mom, I'll be home at the usual time. At the bar, Connie challenged me with her usual bed as I walked in. I sat down at the bar. Tracy came over and sat next to me as soon as Connie put my drink in front of me. I wasn't in the mood for companionship and probably shouldn't have come to the bar, but Tracy needed something, and she didn't care about my interest level. Tracy didn't Connie warn you last week that you'd get in trouble if you kept coming after me. Connie says that to all the girls, Rick. She's just jealous. You never made her your girl, shall I wait for you upstairs, sir? Tracy asked with a twinkle in her eye. I handed her my room key, and she left. I've been puzzling all week about who might have lied to Christy about me and why. Then all of a sudden, the light bulb above my head lit up and suddenly I felt sick. Tracy turned away to go upstairs before I realized the revelation, so she didn't see me jump up angrily. Connie was serving at the table when I approached her. She turned and smiled at me until she saw the look in my eyes. She turned pale, covered her mouth with her hand, and tears filled her eyes. Oh. Rick, I'm so sorry, yeah. I thought that you and I could I cut her off. You killed her, you ruined my marriage and Tom and Mary's marriage. My children have no mother. Why? Why? I'm in love with you, Rick. I'm in love. Don't you dare say you love me. What kind of love monster destroys a marriage with two little kids? Dave came over and stood between us. He pushed me away until he heard my words. Then he stopped and looked incredulously at Connie. Connie, what's he saying? Oh my God, Dave. Please listen to me. I don't think I need to hear this anymore, bitch. Get your ass out of this bar. Go home, pack your shit and go to your friend Terry's. If you're not gone by the time I get home after the bar closes, I'm gonna kick your ass out. Tracy came down to the bar about 15 minutes or so later. She could see that something was wrong. Rick, are you okay? She asked worriedly. Did you know about Connie Tracy? What about her? She told Christy that I was cheating on her, so she'd have a chance to meet me. Tracy immediately couldn't take it anymore and fell to her knees. Oh, no. I didn't know anything, Rick. 
I swear. How could she do that? Oh my God, Cindy and Jimmy, the poor babies, she wailed. Her desperation for my children surprised me. She didn't even know them, but she was crushed knowing what they had been through just because someone wanted to have sex with me. I'm going home, Tracy. I can't are you gonna be okay? Do you want me to come over so you have someone to talk to? No. I'm fine, Tracy. Thank you, don't do anything stupid, Rick. Call me if you need a friendly voice or someone to vent to, I'm available anytime. Thanks, Tracy. I got home, and my mom felt it. Rick, are you okay, what happened? It was Connie. I said quietly. Who's Connie? Mom asked confused, she works at the bar I always go to. Christy and I were friends with her and her husband, she she killed her mom. She told Christy that I cheated and Christy trusted her enough to believe her. I said, looking nowhere. My mind was lost a thousand miles away. Oh, Rick, baby. I'm so sorry, I stayed home the next Saturday and the next one too. Eventually, my mom demanded that I get out of the house and do what I used to do to help myself relax. I wasn't sure I wanted to do that, but I went out after all to another bar a few blocks east. I'd been to Doggy's bar before. It was more of a honky-tonk bar. It was fun, but with a slightly different type of people, more groups of young men out with their friends than the wives and cougars that frequented the northern. I sat down at the counter and ordered myself three fingers of brown, before I could take a sip, Tracy came up behind me and gave me a big hug. Where have you been, Rick? Tracy, what are you doing here at Doggies? Tracy lowered her gaze to her feet and muttered something. What did you say, Tracy? I can't hear you over the music. I said I was looking for you. She called out, this time looking me in the eye. I was worried about you. Do you want to get out of here, Tracy? It's so loud in here you can barely speak. Sure, Tracy shouted with a smile. My car was parked not far from the entrance, and we both leaned against the driver's door talking. Tracy, do you want to go to another bar? We could go to the northern or somewhere else if you want. We could go to my house, Rick, Tracy suggested with a hopeful look in her eye. I'm pretty sure your husband would disapprove Tracy. Tracy's demeanor suddenly changed. I live alone, Rick, Sam's gone. He left you? Did he find out about your cheating? Now she looked angry. I never cheated on my husband. I was with you after Tracy cried apparently thinking about Sam. Tracy, I'm sorry, I didn't know you were divorced when we first met. You said you were married. Now Tracy was sobbing. I put my arm around her and she cried into my shoulder. He didn't divorce me, Rick. He died, I'm so sorry, Tracy. I didn't know. And I guess no one did. Was this right before we met? No, it was before your wife died, when you walked in without her, looking so lost, I thought I was gonna come after you. Tracy, I feel even more lost now than I did then. Someone I thought was a friend lied to my wife about me. My wife decided to get revenge for my supposed betrayal and then die in a car accident, and I still didn't know what was going on. I know how you feel, Ricky. Sam died of a heart attack in bed with his young administrative assistant and not only did I not know he was having an affair, but I didn't even know he had an administrative assistant. We both chuckled unhappily at that. What do you suggest then, my little slut? I asked reminding Tracy of what she had told me a few weeks ago. Tracy smiled broadly at me. That slot would like to take you home and wear you out all night. In the morning, I'd like to go home with you and meet your mom and kids for breakfast. Then I'd like to take you and the kids to the zoo and then come home, get cleaned up, and have a romantic dinner. Then we'll come back here and you can use your girl all night again. I'd like to repeat this every weekend until we're head over heels in love with each other, and you ask me to marry you, I swear jiggers. That's exactly what we did for the next six months until we got married. One small change was that Tracy got pregnant in the fourth month. It didn't really change anything except that she became the designated driver, and I could drink as much as I wanted. Epilogue. 
Dave divorced Connie as soon as possible. Word got out about what she had done, and she eventually moved to the coast to get away from angry looks. Dave was a nice man and eventually married the barmaid he hired instead of Connie. They worked at the bar together for many more years. Tracy and I only had one child together, Harry. That gave us a total of three children, and that was enough. She was kind and loving to all the children. Cindy and Jimmy loved her and called her mom shortly after we were married. Tracy was proud to be my girl. At one point in the evening, she would call me, sir, letting me know she was waiting for the kids to be tucked in. My only problem was keeping Tracy from waking everyone up during her orgasm. The ball gag was doing its job, but I enjoyed kissing too much to leave it on for long. Such a dilemma.